Let's go over the five things I hate about Linux. This is something that I wanted to wait a little bit really to address, but it's something that uh, I think I can now that I've used it for a year and a half on the desktop, a bit over a decade on the server side of things. And uh, on the server side of things, I honestly don't really have any complaints whatsoever. But on the desktop side of things, I find uh, I fell in love with Linux desktop. But there's really these five things that bug me to no end, and it's something that I think everyone should know about, so let's get into it. Now, the number one thing I absolutely hate about Linux desktop, NVIDIA. NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, this isn't Linux's fault. I mean, hell, even uh, Linus Torvalds came out and said, hey. And NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So, NVIDIA, <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, that's what he said. Basically, because he was so sick of their licensing, their proprietary drivers, people getting into Linux desktop that have NVIDIA cards sometimes have a whole bunch of issues, and that's not Linux's fault. It's NVIDIA's fault. A lot of their stuff, you have to go out and download the driver and do it. And if you're a Windows user or a Mac user watching this, you're like, well, so what? That's what you just have to do. And uh, no, in Linux, things just work out of the gate. Like all of my Linux boxes here typically are running AMD graphics. I have a 570, a 580, a Vega 64. All of them just work great out of the box. And then I'm... A, gaming immediately and the drivers stay up to date because those are baked in the kernel. Everything's right with the world and fantastic on AMD graphics cards. But Nvidia, even though they're the king, the best for performance, they have awesome uh, things that features built into them like the InVenc encoder for streaming and other things. Ah, I absolutely love these features on Windows, but on Linux, it's just a nightmare to deal with. I, I absolutely hate NVIDIA cards on Linux, and something that I really wish was changed. I wish they could open source some of this, and I think some of this NVIDIA is saying that they don't actually own, and they're paying royalties for some of these features, so they can't open source them. I don't know how true any of this is, but needless to say, this is my number one. The thing I hate the most is NVIDIA driver support. You have to basically use a proprietary driver, something extra you have to download and go out and get. And depending on the distribution, it may or may not be out there out of the gate and you have to go get it, which just stinks. I hate it. So that's number one. Number two, it's going to be printers, scanners, and other peripherals. This just kind of sucks. <laughs> Uh, and again, not so much Linux's fault because, you know, like HP printers, Xerox printers have a lot of extra applications they launch when you go to print something or scan something and they want to control that whole process end to end. And it really only works in like Windows because they have that application made for Windows. You have to go out or use the CD or uh, the thing that comes with the actual multifunction printer to really get these things to function the way they're intended. And that's just because on Linux, all that stuff's baked into the kernel and it should just work. Now printing, usually I can always get going, but scanning, it's very dodgy. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it's not uh, all the way there. It just depends on what you go with. So if you have a multifunction, do your research on this and you really wanna use all the all the features, You know, it just depends on what you got because some of them just simply don't work. Now, for me personally, I have a Stream Deck. That's like one of the only accessories that I have that is a bit of an issue. So when it comes to my Stream Deck, uh, they have open source stuff and people are starting to interface with it, um, but it's just not quite there just yet. I still have to use a Windows-based box on that Stream Deck and some of the other Elgato stuff to take full advantage of that kind of obscure peripheral. Number three. This is going to be audio. Audio just is not as good on Linux. So I'm just going to come out and say it. The subsystems usually run on what's called Pulse Audio and Allset Audio. And uh, these things are a bit funky. And I'll go ahead and jump to the desktop, just kind of give you a layout. You have these multiple uses, you know, like HDMI and you got your Realtek and other things that go with it. But you can actually change the volume levels for each application. 
But further than that, you can actually change the source of each application. So I could push my browser through the HDMI and then have like a, another app using the Realtek, other one going out through there. So there's a lot of granularity to this. Now, while this seems cool, I find it kind of cumbersome. A lot of times I like uh, the Windows counterpart to how it manages audio just better. Uh, and then on top of that, you don't have like echo cancellation and uh, multi-user support. There's other aspects where Linux just kind of falls a bit short in the audio realm. Number four, sometimes I open up and install a new app that has some of the best functionality I've ever seen and some of the just greatest uh, intuitive just use cases out on the market. And, and Linux itself, God, it's so much powerful than Mac or Windows. And I'm just like, ah, why isn't everyone using this? And this reason is some of that. It's ugly. A lot of times people don't put in the work to just that extra five minutes to make it look perfect, to make it look sexy, to make it look awesome. And instead they have it look like hacker man's using this from the eighties. You know, it's just like this comical, like 1990s style window layout or, um, how they did their menu. It just all this 90s look. I hate it. I hate this dated look of a lot of applications in Linux and, and something that I think should change. Like I made that video just a couple days ago about how the login screen could look like crap out of the gate, but then you just spend five minutes configuring it and then it looks something like that's so much better than Windows or Mac or anything else on the market. And I'm like, why didn't the developers just spend five minutes putting this in, you know, just to make it look awesome? The community's already done the work. And heck, if they would just communicate with the guy that maybe had the wallpaper or maybe that did the design and just say, hey, man, you mind if we use this? And he's probably going to be floored. Go, yeah, of course, it's open source. Just bake it right in the kernel. I, just give me some props in the, in the text file or the readme. And he would love that. And then out of the gate, it would just look awesome. And this just isn't really done in the Linux community. And it drives me crazy why I make so many videos about maybe configuring a certain application or, or a certain feature of a Linux. Uh, because making it look good is like a very, very important thing that most Linux applications miss. They spend years and years developing it, and then they don't spend five minutes making it look decent. Which is like, oh, you're killing me, man. Way more people would use this if it just looked halfway good. And number five, before we get into the bonus here, and that's going to be power management. Oh, power management in Linux is just not very good. <laughs> uh, you can install certain applications. If you have a laptop, make sure you go out and install TLP. This will help a lot with power management. It'll save your laptop battery. It'll make sure your laptop's not dying in the first 60 minutes of usage because it's just running full tilt all the time. Now for desktops, it doesn't matter as much. However, I've noticed when I've done use like sleep and suspend those types of modes, it can be hit and miss. Sometimes it'll just get stuck or not come on. Or maybe when I'm going to power it completely off, it might just stick at the, the shutdown. So it, it depends on the computer. Some don't have any issues. Some do. But I've noticed power management in Linux is still a bit lacking. And it's something that I'll concede to uh, many of the haters out there. Now for the bonus, I'm going to just say this isn't necessarily something I hate, but it could be conskewed as a, a con, and that's standardization in Linux. Um, there's not much standardization. You have a whole bunch to learn. I've been making videos pretty much every single day. Every single day for the past year and a half, I've been researching different aspects of Linux, learning the ins and outs of all these different packages. And I'm like, gosh, it's just such a rabbit hole to go down in. There's just so much of things to learn and there's still a lot I don't know. And just to give an example, uh, most people hate on like system D. It's an init system that comes up and other people say you should be using something else. Uh, and I'm like, well, it's kind of standardizing a lot of the distributions to where people know how to start and stop services or how to add services, all these different things that I consider a good thing, but uh, 
Eh, a lot of people don't. And I'm like, you know what? Some standardization in Linux is a good thing. Uh, too much standardization, I think you end up just like Windows. Everyone knows how to use Windows. Everyone knows the ins and outs and like, uh, this kind of sucks, but I guess that's the only thing we got. So I don't want it to go to that level. So I think there's like a happy medium here. And uh, definitely Linux is the wild, wild west where you have just this huge, vast array. And I'm okay with the selection. And most people aren't with fragmentation, as many people call it. But uh, standardizing a bit here would help a lot of people. Um, however, I think some of it stems from elitism, and you still get that in Linux. Uh, so, you know, standardization and elitism kind of go hand in hand, I find, where people really want to scare others off of Linux and, and say, hey, don't try this. I think a lot of adoption has been stifled from elitism, and that's a, kind of a shame. I, and one thing I tell everyone, and, and when I say elitist, a lot of people think of like the loser living in his mom's basement saying, ah, Linux has to be all this, and you have to build it from scratch and that. And it, not really. I don't consider that elitism. elitism. I, I consider the people that don't want mass adoption to be pretty much elitist because they want to be one of the few that use Linux. So those don't champion Linux adoption, I find, are part of the problem. So you see this a lot when people talk, and probably one of the very first things I like to ask people is, do you want Linux mass adoption? And depending on how they answer this question, typically tells me how they go into this category. There's very few people I've actually talked to that actually just say yes right out of the gate. Uh, you know, I think uh, Jason over at Forbes is one of the only few people I've talked to that was like, yes, I absolutely want Linux mass adoption. I'm like, that's awesome. You know, that's, that's great. That's someone that's kind of on the same page as me and says, hey, I would love Linux mass adoption, which is great. Um, however, most of the other people that are have a good voice in the Linux community Ah, they just go, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe not too much adoption, just just like a little bit of adoption. Or, oh, no, 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 I don't want any more people to use Linux. <laughs> I mean, there's that that exists, but I think everyone should want adoption. And, and I think uh, some of it is just these unfounded fears, thinking that, you know, big corporations would take over Linux and everything would be closed source and proprietary. And I'm like, no, people will just, Open source will always be there. It'll always be a prominent part of Linux. And we, all of us should want mass adoption. Um, but this wishy-washiness about mass adoption in Linux is an issue uh, that I wish got addressed. And I think some of that is with standardization. And some of that is just changing the personalities and, and squashing these fears from people saying, well, if we have ma mass adoption, then that... And, and I think really underlying it all is these people are more scared that they're not special because they use Linux. And let's be face it, if you use Linux or use Windows or use Mac, you're the same. I mean, there's no difference. I don't look down on a Windows user or a Mac user. I say just use whatever works for you. And the only job I have is to give you choice. And I wanted to make this video just to kind of say, hey, these are the things I don't like about Linux um, to help people kind of just uh, understand it's not all sunshine and rainbows, no matter what operating system you pick. And even Linux has its fair share of issues for sure. But these are not deal breakers. It's something that you can work on. Just like with Windows, there's a lot of things I hate. I hate its update cycle. I hate a lot of these, but you can negate a lot of these uh, things depending on the hardware you choose, um, the people you talk to, all those different things is just vital when it comes to Linux adoption. So at the end of the day, I say choose what works for you and uh, don't be such a stickler when you run into someone that doesn't know it all because Linux is, there's just so much to learn and I literally could study it for five years straight and I'd have like probably 20% of the knowledge out there on Linux. There's just so much to learn about it as an operating system, but it is fantastic. Uh, but there are still some things that come up from time to time. So with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.